Today I am super excited to share a project with you. And the project is this. Making one of these shadow box frames. Now, if you're like me, you've gone onto YouTube and you've looked and you've seen the tutorials and, you know, they're great. And this was a project that I made using one of those tutorials where I used one single 12 by 12 piece of paper. And it's great. It's not perfect. It was a little hard to get the corners together, um, but it's great. It's a great project and the tutorials work. That being said, I started thinking about things and I actually saw one person use a die that cut this out so you didn't really have to measure or score much. Um, but that die made me think even more that you don't need a die. You don't need to use a single 12 by 12 inch piece of paper. And quite honestly, we're not limited by this dimension. When everything is said and done, if you're using a single 12 by 12, the largest that the frame is going to be is seven inches square. And the opening, the largest it's, it's gonna be is five inches square. I'm here to show you how that is being thrown out the window. And if you follow the basic premise of the formula, you will be able to make beveled, non-beveled, um, all different kinds of frames, all different kinds of shapes, and certainly all different kinds of si sizes, definitely more than seven inches square with a five inch opening. So let's get started. So here's the, the one that I made using a simple eight and a half inch by 11 inch square piece of paper. Now, as you can see, I have it all put together with washi because I'm right now going to take it apart so you can see how it's been put together. Because this is four separate pieces of paper, you'll see that I um, added in some dimension to give it what I call a lip. Okay, so let's take this apart so you can see what I did. There's no adhesive except for this washi because I wanted it to be able to be deconstructed. When I take the tape off, you'll notice that it is a true four and a quarter by five and a half piece of paper. The only waste for this whole project is this. Now, if you're familiar with the other format and the way that all of the other tutorials work, you have quite a bit of waste. You have all of this in here that has to get cut away and that happens on all four corners. And to do it, you know, in that way, it allows you to roll those up and it all works really nice. And the premise is really good, but my way of doing it as separate sides definitely help with less wasting of the paper and more functional. So as you'll see, here's my lip and here are my scores. And again, here's the waste. For this one, we started out with my first score. Now, if you want to remember the formula, the first column here is going to be what you put your adhesive on and it is your bottom. Your second score, and this one was done at a, at a half inch. This next one was done at a half inch. This next one is your side. So you have your B for bottom, your S for side, then this is your top. So B, S, T, and you're gonna score it another half inch, and then side again. So you have B for bottom, S for side, T for top, and S for side. And in that way, this is going to end up <clears throat> being scored and folded, and it's going to wrap around, and then you see you have your, bot you have your flap, you have your side, you have your top, you have your side and you have your bottom. Again, you have your flap, you have your side, which is the outside, you have your top right here, and that's what gets beveled. We're only beveling one corner, and if we bevel one corner on all four pieces, then they fit together like a puzzle and it works perfect. Now, if you don't want a flap to give yourself something to glue into, you don't have to. Here's the beveled one that we're gonna be making. And this is an example where there is no flap. 
But if this was your artwork and this was a large piece of paper, you could lay that down and then just glue your frame right on top of it. And you could put your adhesive here and here and just lay it right down on a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And then you have this whole middle section. Now again, when I made this project, it started out also as a 12 by 12 piece of paper, but I only ended up with that seven and a half, I believe. Nope, it's actually smaller. I only ended up with a five inch square opening. So to be able to expand that to a 10 inch square opening is awesome and gives you a lot more real estate to create and um, to have fun with. Like I said, the first one that we're going to actually make is this black square. Um, we're using the scoring tool. That's gonna be really important. And I'll keep bringing this in as an example to show. Although when I look at this, this is all half inch marks. And again, once you have the formula of B for bottom, S for side, T for top, S for side, and then your, your bottom flap again, you can make any of these dimensions, half inch, full inch, half inch, plus a full inch. You can make them two inches wide. Whatever you wanna do, it's up to you and you'll have flexibility to make your frame as, long, as wide, to make your frame as high as you want, and to have that inner area as large or as small as you want as well. You could even do this with poster boards, so you're not just stuck with a 12 inch piece of paper, but that's typically what we have. So again, I have the two sides already put together. Now, it is gonna be really important to also pay attention to where you put your adhesive because you don't wanna put it all together and um, put this whole um, cylinder or um, side together and adhere it all down. Because at the end of the day, we are going to be tucking another piece in here. So we don't wanna take away the adhesive or glue it down yet until we have all of our pieces tucked in and then we can do it. So there is some, um, prep and kind of stalling patterns that you will end up doing, but as you see, things will come together. <clears throat> now, here's an example of one that is already pre-scored. And yes, I have another one that's not scored at all, so we'll be doing that one. So again, for this one, we're going to score at half. That's gonna be our bottom that sticks to the flap. We're gonna score at one and a half because we want a one inch tall side. We're gonna score at two and a half because we want our top to be a one inch wide frame. We have another side, B, S, T, S. That's also one inch, and this will, will often mirror this side unless it's a bevel. If it's a bevel, this side gets skipped, and that's the difference, so we'll show that later. But for this example, where it's one inch tall and one inch wide, it's a half inch, score at one and a half inches to give you that full inch, score at two and a half inches to give you that full inch, score at three and a half inches to give you that full inch, and then you're gonna give yourself another guide at the four and a half inches. Here is a 12 inch by six inch piece of black cardstock. If I follow my instructions, I need to remember the formula, B, S, T, S, and then my flap. So my bottom piece is going to be a half inch because I don't need a full inch to put the adhesive on. A half inch is fine, so let's not waste paper. Then I have decided that my side is a half inch tall. So B, S, this is my first side, and I want a full inch for that, so I scored it half inch, one and a half inches. I want my top to also be a full inch. So I'm going to score at two and a half. So I have B, S, T, S. This is my last side. And I'm going to score that at a full inch because I want that to match my other side because it's gonna be a full square. Now again, I'm gonna give myself another score which I'm not gonna fold on and that's gonna give me a guide as to where to set the adhesive. Now, just like with this one, I wanna make sure that I'm doing it on the correct side. So this one has my indentations there. I wanna do the same thing, and you'll see why after I go ahead and score it. 
So just like this one, I'm going to carry it across the B and the S, and then I'm gonna stop. I'm also gonna bring it out a full inch because that's what I decided my top was going to be, a full inch. So I'm bringing that down to my second level. So I'm cutting across the bottom, I'm cutting across the first side, and I'm stopping when I get to my T, and I don't need to cut it for the S, and I don't need to score it for the, for the flap. Okay, so that's all you need your scoreboard for. Let's put the scoreboard away. So now all I'm gonna do, that guide gave me a visual to be able to take my snips and cut right up to that point. You don't wanna go over it because you really wanna be careful. This is what's going to be visible for your miter. So I cut right up to that point and then I kind of fold that back. And again, I'm going to use this point as a reference and that as a reference point to then cut my bevel. So I'm gonna get my scissors right into that little groove that I made and I'm gonna point them to this point up here. And in that respect, I can, with one cut, pretty much trim it away. And it's as simple as that. And that is the only waste with this whole project. And again, we have this extra guide right here because as you can see, this wants to push in because you only gave yourself that half inch. If you want to give yourself a full inch, that might help you, but I didn't want to waste the paper. And I wanted to give myself more flap over here. So if this first one ended up being a full inch, you'll just lose a little bit, a half inch here on your flap. <clears throat> So we're going to adhere it down like that. Now, oh, so what I just realized is I put this on the completely wrong side. So I really want to put it on this side. Silly me. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. And again, doing this once on some scrap paper is really helpful and also doing it um, and putting it together with washi definitely also helps you identify where your adhesive is going to go. So because I realized I put the adhesive on the wrong side, I'm just going to go ahead now and add some more adhesive. Is to take your pokey tool, which I love, your piercing tool, and for me to take this backing of the adhesive off, I just score across the backing and then I can get my, my um, piercing tool right in there to lift it up. Now I'm not gonna lift it totally off, I just wanna give myself a little lip, okay? So let's go ahead and take that long piece off and throw that away. Now again, I'm gonna use that score line. So now we're ready to go. Let me go ahead and bring the frame over that's already been constructed. We have two sides that are done. If you remember, I have a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here that I already scored a little bit. And I don't know if you can see, but it's already picking up a little bit. So that's good. I have a piece of tape here that if you remember, we laid this down. You could even do it at this stage if you wanted to. Um, I took this waist, I'm lining it up, and I laid that down. Now why you want it on that angle and not this angle is because, and again, this is the dry run. When that fits together, that's gonna be where the um, adhesive is. I could put it there, but I find having it on this edge works. So you could put it on this underside or here, whatever works for you. So the dry run looks good. My long strip of adhesive stopped giving myself enough room to have that lip. So you'll wanna be cognizant of that. I have some adhesive there and there that's gonna hold this over here. Again, another dry run, it looks good. So now I can go ahead 
These are already ready for me to peel away. Now let's put the other piece together as well. This side ha doesn't have any of the adhesive on it. Um, so as you remember, I scored it there, but really I'm gonna go ahead and do all my, my folds first. So when we're looking at this, here's our bottom, here's our side, here's our top, here's our side, and here's our flap. So B, S, T, S, F, okay? So when that rolls around, it's going to look like this, which is exactly what this piece looks like. And it's going to come right around and be up here. Okay, so now let's think through where our adhesive is gonna go. I want a long piece right here. And because I have another flap, I wanna be aware of kind of centering this to give myself enough room for the flap. I also wanna bring it right up to that edge. So if I have to tuck my artwork in, I have all of this space right in here to wiggle, to tuck my artwork in. The other thing that you can do as a guide is you can bring your scoreboard back. And let me put that back there. That's one of the reasons why I love the Stampin' Up! Simply Scored Board. You can use this edge and this edge to help you position. So I'm bunting it up against this edge. I'm bunting it up against this edge right here to give me a square. You can go ahead and completely flatten it and burnish it down, okay? So that's ready to go. I'm gonna get rid of my scoreboard again. So here we go with our frame. And I am going to put this side together first. So to do that, I'm going to take this piece off. I'm going to take that piece off. And see how easy those pieces come off? Because I've already gotten it ready. I'm gonna take piercing tool. <clears throat> I'm a lefty, so that's why I keep doing it on this direction. So I'm going to fit it in there. I'm even going to fit it in down here, but I don't have to worry about pushing it down yet. I'm going to fit it in, and then I'm going to push it down. Okay? We're almost done. We're in the home stretch. Okay, so now we just have to put this last one. And if you wanted to, you could come back in and put some more adhesive right there um, on any of the flaps. So now we just have to take this adhesive off, this adhesive off. Again, having that prepped and ready so that you're not fussing with it. Everything was ready. I'm going to place it and then push and press. And there is your shadow box frame made out of a 12 by 12 piece of paper, actually two 12 by 12 pieces of paper, 12 inches by six inches made each side. I have my flap, I have my side, I have my top, I have my side, and I have my bottom. So B, S, T, S, F. There is the formula, and that is what made this frame. So whether or not you start out with a 12 by 12 piece of paper and make it with one sheet, or you start out with two 12 by 12 pieces of paper, you can end up with a much larger project. And if you notice, you just scored a bunch more real estate to then create artwork. Here's our beveled frame. Now it's the same exact premise. I have this piece here. I have this piece here where I have my, ad my adhesive. 
and I'm going to um, take that off in a minute. But I want to just do the math with you. We have B. We don't have an S because when it's beveled, you skip the S. So we have B, T for top, S for side, and there's your bottom flap. Now, if you notice, it's always the top, the T, that has the bevel right here, um, the mitered edge. The T always has the miter. So we have B, T, S, F. B, T, S, F. Whereas with the other one, when we were um, doing it with the other one, we had B, S, T, S, F. With a, with a beveled edge, you're skipping this side altogether. And what happens with that is your top comes down to adhere to the bottom, and that gives that triangular bevel, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead We're doing a beveled edge, so we want our half inch. We want our one inch, which is what my beveled across the top is. So we have our B, our T. I wanted a half inch for my side. So here's that. So I scored at a half inch. I scored at one and a half inches and I scored at two inches. For that top, I didn't have to come down two because I skipped the side, so I only came down the one. And because my top is a full inch across, I want my miter to be the full inch. So let me go ahead and cut along that guide. And then I'm going to fold that so I have a visual. And now I'm going to cut from point to point. And there you go. Let's get rid of the scoreboard. And I want to make sure that I'm folding it in the correct way. So because I have my bevel here, I want to make sure my bevel is down here for this bottom corner. So I want to make sure that I'm folding it in that direction. If by chance, and I know this because I've done it, if by chance your bevel ends up at the wrong end, just fold it in the other direction. You don't have to throw it away. I don't want to adhere that down because remember, we have two edges. So we have this edge and we have this edge. And if this was already all adhered, I wouldn't be able to slip that in. Here's that one. Here's this one. And I'm gonna wait on this one. So let's go ahead and get that in. Give that a little push. That's ready. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. There's that one. And I can go ahead and put that down. And that's gonna go in here. And here's our frame. Your best friends are going to be your piercer, your bone folder, your simply scored tool, as well as your simple trimmer, your stamp and trimmer. So I left a piece of adhesive there by mistake, but actually it's not gonna be a mistake because you'll wanna put adhesive on all the sides because then when everything is said and done, you'll have your artwork to lay down and then there's your frame. So your artwork will end up sitting right here 
and you can have all this real estate to create to your heart's content. You can even trim this 12 inch by 12 inch down, maybe by an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch, and that way you won't have any overlap. But that's what it's gonna be. You have this full space in here, which ends up being 10 inches, um, 10 by 10, to um, have a framed piece of scrapbook page artwork. Maybe you wanna do what I did here and use the large letter framelit set. Um, and spell out a word. You could spell out, maybe there's a new baby in your life. You can um, spell out the baby's name and maybe the date of when they were born or maybe how many pounds and how many inches they are. The large number framelit set is about to retire, so I do recommend that you purchase that. The large numbers framelit die set is number 140622, and this is about to retire, so I do recommend that you scoop that up now, because this is a perfect project to do for a new married couple, a wedding gift, um, a baby shower gift. Using these numbers are fabulous. The scale of the numbers are fabulous, and they are about to retire. So um, it's just an awesome, uh, project to do. The letters are about two inches. If you're into die cutting and you have a big shot, um, this project really lends itself to having both of these die sets. You can order them at happyhousecreates.stampinup.net right here, happyhousecreates.stampinup.net. Um, you can find me on all social media platforms at Instagram, Periscope, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Pinterest. Create from within and go get crafty today.